Well, joining us now from Philadelphia in the United States is the Palestinian-American writer and political commentator, Susan Abelhauer. She's also the author of the best-selling novel, Mornings in Jen. And Susan, thanks very much for speaking to us on World News this morning. Uh, in practical terms, what difference will this UN vote make? Well, the vote is largely symbolic, um, but uh, I think the symbolism uh, of this should not be taken lightly. Um, it, it reflects really the overwhelming international support for Palestinian uh, liberation and um, our struggle to be masters of our own fate as a nation. Um, and it's really another uh, link in, in a growing network of global solidarity with Palestinians that, that has been gaining more and more popular support. Um, for example, the, the boycott and divestment campaign um, that has uh, garnered supporters from all over the world. Um, hundreds of thousands of people, um, intellectuals, Nobel laureates, academics, religious leaders, and artists all over the world. Um, uh, most recently, Stevie Wonder, for example, uh, canceled an appearance um, that he was scheduled to do for, for Friends of the IDF um, because of what they stand for. So this is, um, this is an important example um, in, in a long list of, inter of, of an international movement of civil society to um, to put an end to Israel's unchecked and persistent aggression. Yeah. So, um, but in terms of tangible um, uh, things, it, it, that will really depend on what the Palestinian leadership does um, with this recognition, whether or not they will um, bring complaints to the ICC. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, you, you say it's, it's a process and the start of a process. I mean, it's been recognized as a state, but only by one body, albeit a, an important international body. But Israel, though, says it's meaningless. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, just because Israel says it is doesn't mean it is. Um, and they're, they're, they're doing more than just saying that. In fact, um, they're threatening to cut off various lifelines available to Palestinians in the West Bank, um, which is not unlike what we've seen uh, happen in Gaza. I mean, this is how Israel controls Palestinian lives. They are the gatekeepers of all Palestinian money and commerce. Um, so they just close the gates when, whenever they please. Um, they control Palestinian water, Palestinian electricity, um, their uh, ability to move from one town to another. So um, when Palestinians do something that Israel doesn't like, they can withhold all these things, um, and they're threatening to do precisely that, um, as, as we've seen in the case with, with Gaza, where um, Israel has created uh, intentionally um, uh, a situation of unspeakable misery and uh, malnutrition, unemployment, etc. But, uh, you know, frankly, I think um, the world should, should stop allowing Israel to continue to dictate um, Palestinian lives and, and, and what all these things mean. Um, the reality is that Palestinians are, are, are the natives of that land. Um, we didn't arrive there from, from Eastern Europe and, and all other parts of the world. Um, we were already there. We have always been there. Um, we are the natives in every sense of that word. Um, historically, legally, ethnically, culturally, even genetically, we can prove our belonging. Um, and as an indigenous people whose society is, is being destroyed and, um, and literally being wiped off the map, we have a right to, to explore every means available to us to, uh, to um, pursue the implementation of our basic human rights as a people. Susan, we must leave it there, but many thanks for your time this morning. Susan Abel Hawa. And in the next hour, we will also be speaking to a member of the Israeli Knesset as well. We are watching Sky World News still ahead this hour. Fighting fit, former cricketer Freddie Flintoff talks the talk ahead of his big fight.